5.3, where today we're looking at sum and difference formulas for the sine and cosine. Um, all right, so to, to begin here, there are a couple of videos that you guys can reference as far as like how these are proven, uh, where they come about. Um, but I got to say, a lot of those are, are kind of more work than we really need to demonstrate in order to really understand the applicability of these even and odd functions. That said, if you're in class, I'm going to start off by explaining to you or showing you, demonstrating one of those proofs so that, you know, at the very least, you guys can really appreciate that the work that goes into these to actually demonstrate the understanding behind them is, is broader than I think a lot of students give it credit for, okay? And certainly at the upper levels of mathematics, you guys are going to see proofs for things all the time. And basically, all your calculus courses, we're going to be proving and developing theorems for various things. So. Yeah, so let's go ahead and start off with the formulas here down below. You'll notice this entire front page here, totally blank except for a unit circle that we can then use later on, okay? So I'm going to start off with the uh, sine sum formula, okay? And for the sine sum formula, what it tells us is that sine of x plus y is equal to sine of x cosine of y plus cosine x sine of y. All right, so this basically allows us to take two known angles and deal with them separately using some basic operations, just some multiplication and addition, and therefore create the idea of a sum, okay? Now, to develop the sine difference formula, the sine difference formula, all we're going to do is we're going to take that rule and we're going to modify which input is positive and which is negative so that we're effectively making subtraction. So sine of x minus y... Let's treat this as if we've got sine of x plus a negative y. And by doing so, we're now back to our sine sum formula, except obviously our input has changed. And we can use what we know about even and odd functions to better understand what's happening here. Okay? So to begin, we know that sine of x plus negative y is going to be the same as using this formula as sine of x cosine of negative y plus cosine of x sine of negative y, okay? So all it does is it kind of modifies what these two inputs are, okay? Now, let's apply the ideas that we've developed about even and odd functions for cosine, okay? And in case you're, you're wondering what I'm referring to, it's the idea that cosine is an even function because a horizontal reflection would map it back onto itself, and therefore f of x is equal to f of negative x. In the case of sine, we see using the general structure of a sine graph, we see that this is an odd function, a horizontal followed by a vertical uh, series of reflections, otherwise known as f of x equals negative f of negative x, would map this back onto itself. And therefore, we can swap both the input and the output between these two, okay? So maybe those can help us better work with these changed inputs, okay? Because we've got a cosine of negative y, and because cosine is an even function, cosine of negative input is the same as cosine of the regular input. So I can simply rewrite this piece as cosine of y. Why don't we take a moment and do that? So the left side, or the left expression, goes to sine of x times cosine of y. As for the right expression, we've got cosine of x times sine of negative y. Sine, again, being an odd function, tells us that if both the interior and exterior have a sine change, that we can go back to the original function. Unfortunately, even though it's odd, that doesn't quite apply. We don't have a negative on the outside. So what we could do up to the original rule, by dividing by negative 1, we tell ourselves that negative f of x is equal to f of negative x. And this allows us to determine what's going on with odd functions, right? So a negative on the inside is actually the same as the negative on the outside. This is an alternative rule for, uh, for odd functions, OK? So down below, because we've got sine of negative y, kind of like f of negative x, I could call it negative sine of y, negative sine of y. And that way, we're back to this idea of changing the inputs to the original x and y, okay? And what this means, because I now have a positive times a negative, is really just that that interior sign has now changed, okay? So this is our sine difference formula. Sine of x minus y is the exact same as sine of x cosine of y plus, or I'm sorry, minus cosine of x sine of y. These are kind of the go-to formulas that we're working off of. All right. <clears throat> From there, why don't we take a look at our, our uh, cosine sum and difference formulas. 
starting off with the cosine sum formula. So this tells us that cosine of x plus y is the exact same as cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y. Okay? So let's just look at the structure for a moment. You'll notice with sine, we go sine, cosine, cosine, sine, leaving the inputs the same. And the sine on, between the x and the y is precisely the same sine of positive that we use in the expressions. Okay? In the case of a negative, exact same. The negative we're going to reuse, and we left everything the same. Okay? In the case of cosine and, and sine differences and sums, and again, you can see this on the proofs, what you'll notice is we have a cosine, cosine, minus, or plus a sine, sine. Okay? In this case, a positive will create a negative. Okay? So just kind of important to catch these details because the expectation is that you guys are memorizing these. Okay? All right, so we've got that piece down. Why don't we go ahead and use that along with, once again, what we know about even and odd functions to create the cosine difference formula. Okay? All right, for the cosine difference formula, we'll set this up as cosine of x minus y. We know that to be the same as cosine of x plus a negative y. And from there, we can now say, well, this is the same as cosine of x cosine of negative y minus uh, sine of x sine of negative y, right? So let's go ahead and uh, show that. Oops, not my, uh, plus, but a minus. Minus sine of x and sine of negative y. So once again, what we know in both of these two cases, cosine of negative y is the same as cosine of y. So I can simply bring down cos x, cos y. And in the case of sine of negative y, much as I had done here, we know that that's actually the exact same as negative sine of y. So this is subtracting sine of x times a negative sine of y, thereby giving us cosine x, cosine y, plus double negative makes a positive sine x, sine y. Okay? So this is our next formula, the idea that cosine of x minus y, the difference can be created using these expressions. Okay? And there we have it. All right, so you guys have your four main formulas. We've got sine sum, sine difference, cosine sum, cosine difference. <clears throat> and now what I want to talk about is what this really allows you to do. Okay? Now, let's reference the unit circle for this because this has a lot to do with angle measures that you guys have seen developed over the last semester. We know at 0, 30, 45, and 60, 90, 120, 135, 150, 180, 210, 225, 240, 270, 300, 315, and 330, back around to 360, that basically all of these angle measures are known to us, right? So let's go ahead and think about what these new angle sum and angle difference formulas really allow us to do. Okay? Because there is a lot of power in them, so long as you understand why it will work this way. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and take a moment and write these out so that you guys can ask yourselves, what do they have in common? 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, 120, 135, so on and so forth. Just ask yourself, what is common to this entire set of numbers? What you should come up with is the idea that all of these are multiples of 15. Okay? <clears throat> and because all of these are multiples of 15, then effectively what I'm saying is that I am adding and subtracting values that I can divide 15 out of. I can divide it out evenly. So therefore, all that I can create are going to be sums or differences of multiples of 15, right? So what's missing? Multiples of 15 would also include 15 degrees, right? And it would include 75 degrees. It would include 105, 165, 195, 255, 285, and 345. So if you look at the spacing, it should come as no surprise that these are now evenly spaced into the following number of sections. 360 divided by 15. We know 15 goes into 320 times, and it goes into 64 times. 
So there are now 24 locations that we can create. Before, it had simply been those 16, okay? This is giving us some new locations. Now, you've already seen a lot of symmetry here before, but it's not a bad idea to remind ourselves that there are shared Y values using horizontal lines. There are shared X values using vertical lines. And so as we work to create these, it absolutely will show repeated values, okay? But these are really the, the new ones that we can work with, that we can create, okay? So let me give you one quick example. I might ask you guys, what would the cosine of 75 degrees be? Okay, so why don't we use our newfound knowledge to create that? What is the cosine of 75 degrees? Okay, there's a lot of room on the back. I'm just gonna fill this in down in the bottom left corner here. So cosine of 75 degrees. Well, of course, we don't know that innately, but we have worked with the unit circle a lot. And because of that work with the unit circle, we know that we could call this the cosine of 45 plus 30 degrees. Those are equivalent after all, okay? By rewriting it this way, I've now created two angle measures that I'm quite familiar with out of one that I was not, and therefore I can calculate what this is using my angle sum formula, okay? So cosine of 45 plus 30 using our formula tells us we're gonna take cosine of 45, cosine of 30, and we will subtract off sine 45, sine 30. So let's see what we get now, okay? Thinking about these angles as different locations around the unit circle, we know that 45 has an x value of root 2 over 2. We know cosine has an x value at 30 degrees of root 3 over 2. At uh, 45 degrees, the y value is root 2 over 2. This negative is simply brought down, right? We're still subtracting based on our cosine sum formula. And we know the y value at 30 degrees is 1 half. So what do we get? Radical 6 over 4 minus radical 2 over 4, or radical 6 minus radical 2 all over 4. And that is the cleanest way for us to talk about the cosine of 75, the x value at this location. Now, we just talked about this idea of repeats. So this x value is just to the right of a value of 0, okay? And we know that it, it's the x value for the point up above, therefore it has to be the x value for the point down below. This should be the exact same as the cosine of 285. Likewise, because of reflections across the line y equals x, I know that these y values across here are also going to be radical 6 minus radical 2 all over 4, okay? Because of the idea of inverse relations, okay? A flip across the line y is equal to x. So at the end of the day, there's really just four new values that we're going to create, and you're going to end up seeing a whole lot of patterns to these, okay? That's kind of the beauty of them, all right? Now, applying these is simple enough because it's just a matter of how you choose to break up your angles that I'm going to really leave this to you. Um, at the end of the day, I'm just going to like give you guys some, some uh, final values, and then you can, you can ask me if you have any further questions on how those were developed, okay? But like I said, it really just comes down to using these formulas, okay? In the case of 75 degrees, I do want to point out that instead of using an addition formula, I absolutely could have called 75 the same as 120 minus 45. And using the cosine difference formula, cosine of 75 equals cosine of 120 minus 45, I could then apply it, and once again, I would end up with this same, uh, same final result. The difference there is you're going to do cosine of 125, 120 times cosine of 45, and it'll be a plus because the difference formula changes that sign. And then we have plus sine of 120 times sine of 45, okay? So once again, you have some options here. It's just a matter of, of making sure that you see them. There are an infinite number of ways for you guys to do these problems because there are coterminal angles, okay? So <clears throat> that's really where a lot of the work up above is going to come into play. Um, I'd like you guys to take a moment and try these five problems on your own. Go ahead and simply apply your formulas and see kind of the direction it takes you, okay? Problems one and two, I will not be providing work because I've kind of already shown you an example very similar to those. It's just a matter of your creativity when coming up with the values and then making sure that those values are correct with your work from the unit circle. Okay, so take a few moments, go ahead and fill these out, and let's see how you did. All right, so number one, hopefully you guys have finished these. Number one, uh, we should end up with radical six minus radical two over four. I'd, I'd actually describe that after our work with cosine of 75, okay? Um, sine of 1095, 
Well, I know that 1080 is three full rotations, and that means this is actually equivalent to sine of 15 degrees, because those are coterminal angles. They stop at the same spot. Now you could just go sine of 45 minus 30 to get this, but again, there's lots of ways to do it. You could do sine of 60 minus 45. You could do sine of 150 minus 135. So again, lots of options there, okay? And what you should end up with there as well is radical 6 minus radical 2 over 4. Something else I described before you guys started. This is the y value just above our x-axis, just like this is the x value just to the right of the y-axis, okay? So mirrored or repeated values, you're going to see plenty of them, okay? In the case of tangent of 75, what I would recommend is viewing this as sine of 75 over cosine of 75. And that's where you can do separate uh, sum or difference formulas above and below, and you can create your values, okay? So what do these values end up being? Well, you should end up with a radical 6 plus radical 2 over 4 in the numerator, and for the denominator, for cosine of 75, a radical 6 minus radical 2 over 4. Now, if I take that and I multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator, 4 over root 6 minus root 2, we're going to notice the 4 simply reduce, and therefore I'm left with root 6 plus root 2 over root 6 minus root 2, okay? So what do we do with that? Well, what I would do is, actually, instead of equality, let's just multiply by the opposite of this binomial. So we're going to have a root 6 plus root 2. So it's sort of the conjugate here, right? So we've got a root 6 plus root 2 in the, both the numerator and the denominator. So I'll multiply the binomials up top and the binomials down below, and let's see what we get. So as we start multiplying these details out, again, feel free to show more work if you need it, but root 6 times root 6, root 6 times root 2, root 2 times root 6, and root 2 times root 2, should end up giving you 6 plus 2 root 12 plus 2 all over. And down in the denominator, because this is a difference of squares, we would end up with 6 minus 2, okay? Which is, of course, 4. So further simplifying, 6 and 2 is 8. 8 plus 2 root 2. Well, 2 root 2, or I'm sorry, 2 root 12 is the same as 2 times 2 root 3. And this is all over 4. And because this is divisible by 4, and that's divisible by 4, and this is divisible by 4, we end up with a 2 plus radical 3. So that's our final simplified version, okay? Just a matter of some division at that stage, okay? So this is the tangent of 75. If you're ever wondering about these and you have access to a calculator, feel free to plug this in and like test your answer, see the decimal equivalent, and see if they're the same, right? That's an easy route to go. As for 4 and 5, these are a little bit odd, so we'll take a moment and kind of parse through them. So sine of x plus pi, you'll notice this is an addition formula. So we'll refer to this as sine of x cosine of pi plus cosine of x sine of pi. Okay? So what do we get from here? Well, we know that cosine at pi, the x value at pi radians, is negative 1, and therefore this is sine of x times a negative 1. We also know that sine of pi, the y value at pi radians, is 0, and therefore we'll get cosine of x times 0, which reduces. So therefore I'm left with a negative sine of x, right? That's kind of the final takeaway. And if you think about this as a half rotation that you're adding on to sine of x, it would make sense that negative sine of x will work because you're going to be on opposite sides of the circle. So as one goes up, the other's going down, you'll get opposite y values, right? Just think about that in terms of rotations. It should make sense. All right, for cosine of x plus 3 pi over 2, let's again try our sum formula. In the case of cosine, this is cosine of x cosine of 3 pi over 2 minus sine of x sine of 3 pi over 2. Now, at 3 pi over 2, we know that the x value is actually 0. So that means this is cosine of x times 0, which reduces. And as for negative sine of x sine of 3 pi over 2, we know sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And so this is a negative sine of x times a negative sine of x. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, negative 1. And therefore, a negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive. And we're left with just 0 plus sine of x. So we get sine of x, OK? So we think about this as a you know, 3 quarter rotation down around to the base. And then we're going to rotate from there and focus on x values. Our x value would start at 0 and then increase to 1, go back to 0, negative 1, and back to 0. Just imagine a rotation around a circle. As for the y values with our standard sine of x, we start off at 0, go 
up to 1. We go to the left, that's 0, negative 1, and back to 0. This is the exact same as that 3 quarter rotation on cosine. And this is further emphasizing why we call both cosine and sine sinusoids. With small shifts, or well, sometimes big shifts, it kind of doesn't matter, you can end up with one function out of the other. Okay? Well, there we have it. Hopefully this made sense to you. If you guys need further uh, help on this, please reach out to a like during AL or just shoot me an email. Good luck on your assignment.